Dr. Matt Connolly. I work with Commonwealth Orthopedics in Northern Kentucky as the podiatrist in the group. And what we're going to talk about today assumes that you've been diagnosed with a fracture or a sprain that needs to be held still. There are some fractures and sprains that can be held still with minimal uh, bracing, sometimes soft bracing, and sometimes things are so bad that you have to go to a screw or a pin fixation and a lot more internal approach. But if we can externally hold your trauma still, we can use one of these two devices, one being a cast and the other being a boot. And we're going to discuss how to pick between the two. The nice thing about a cast is that it's custom made and that's why we have one that's been cut off because this is directly from the patient who took care of it. And we have this directly to that. We can't use that for anybody else. It's properly padded, it's properly fit. And the great thing about a cast is it will just sit and do its job of holding you still and letting you heal. The bad part about a cast is it never leaves, it's always there. You have to shower and keep it dry. You have to sleep in it, you have to live with this thing. And that's the nice thing about a boot. A boot, although it's an off the shelf thing, can come off. You can take a break, you can take a shower or a bath. You don't have to sleep with a boot on in some cases. So how do you choose between the two? First of all, the boot has to fit. If the, since the boot is off the shelf, any woman with pantyhose knows that one size really fits some and no size fits all. If you're a little far out of the norm, you might want something custom made like this. Second of all, you have to be good enough with the boot to use it right. So we're gonna talk about boot rules. First of all, Let's put the boot on properly. And the way to put the boot on is from bottom to top and from inside to out and re-snug everything. On this boot, we would start here on the bottom and then Velcro to the top. We have the patient's heel all the way back. We turn around and re-snug everything. It's the best way to go. This type of boot has a shield over the top of it and the pump on this boot, and many of the boots do have a pump so that we can add air to it. The pump on this boot is right in, in with the uh, padding. Again, we'll go from bottom to top, working through each of the um, pieces. And I'll re-snug each one of these. The idea behind this boot as we work with it is to keep the foot or the ankle completely still. And that is how bone healing and uh, sprain healing occurs. So once we've done all three of those straps, we'll re-snug each one. And then pump the boot up. And the boot does not have to be so tight as to strangle the foot, but so tight so that the foot all moves as one. The foot and the leg all become just one structure. And that's what we really want to do. The rules that I give for patients with a boot are fairly simple. Every step needs to be in the boot without exception. The uh, boot can be taken off for a bath or a shower, but it should be seated, not standing. You do not want to be standing on a slippery floor with your broken foot, slip a little bit, re-break the bone, and start over. So sit down. When you're finished, dry off, put the boot back on, and then stand up and do the rest of your bathroom activities. Do you need to sleep in the boot? Well, you can. If it's more comfortable, as most people would say, you'd rather sleep without it. You can't go to the bathroom until the boot's back on. If that's too quick, if there's not enough time to do that, then it's worth sleeping in the boot. For driving, if this would be your right foot, as long as you're able to put on the brakes, and really this is not about pressing the pedals as much as it is jamming on the brake if somebody cuts you off, but as long as you're able to put on the brake comfortably, and that would be up to your doctor, what we would do is say walk all the way to the car with the boot, take the boot off, put your shoe on and drive, take the shoe back off, put the boot back on, and then get out of the car. It's five extra minutes on every trip you take, but it's safe. Finally, I always tell people that stillness being the key to healing, if you're going to read a book, if you're going to watch a movie, if you're going to work at a desk, if you can elevate your foot when necessary, the boot doesn't need to be there. If the fire alarm goes off, take a really deep breath, put your boot on, and leave and get to safety. Every step needs to be in the boot. Finally, whether you have a boot or a cast, this rule, especially in early healing, is important. Swelling and pain means you're moving this too much to heal, get off of it. The alternative is also true. When somebody says, you're on this too much, 
and you say it's not swollen, it's not painful, then what you're doing is probably okay. As time goes on and healing occurs, that rule can change. And by the time you can uh, take the boot off or the cast off, hopefully we'll have enough strength that the foot and the ankle can work on their own. Again, I'm Dr. Matt Connolly, and this is Commonwealth Orthopedic Centers. Thank you.